Hi everyone. Sorry I wasn't uh, able to get something out at the beginning of this month as I had originally promised, but actually I was in the middle of uh, a series of short film projects with another person, and I would like to talk to you all about a subject that uh, has been in the news a lot lately, and now a friend of mine's friend's daughter, um, you know, it's, it's a long story, I don't know them personally, but he uh, he got in touch with me and said, listen, uh, she needs help, she's being bullied on Facebook. So there's kids that are you know, doing the same thing as they did with Retea Parsons, the girl who uh, committed, committed suicide recently because of all the harassment on Facebook. Something similar is happening to my friend's friend's daughter right now. And they knew that I had tracked bullies down before on this channel, as anyone who watches, who's watched the Peddling Prince's Podium during its run will know. So they figured, okay, he probably knows how to do that. And I'm researching that right now, and I'm pretty sure I can track these guys down, or these girls, or whoever they are, as soon as, uh, I, as, as soon as I do a little bit of research. But what I would like to talk about is the fact that of what's changed uh, today with bullying. I was bullied as a boy. I have had my personal property damaged. I've been taunted and teased. And, but the nice thing about my era is when I went home, I could lie down, throw on the headphones, and uh, I could relax. But that's not the way it is nowadays. With the technology we now have, with not only with Facebook being able to distribute things all across the world in an instant, um, uh, there's also the fact that there's so many portable devices now, even your phone can get you on Facebook, and uh, basically that means that anything you put out on Facebook can be sent to everyone everywhere, whether they're at their computers or not. Now this has become a problem for people who are being bullied, because another feature of, the, of these applications and, uh, on Facebook is that people are able to post anonymously. Now I understand why that feature was added. Some people don't feel free to speak when they know people know who they are. But sometimes that is a good thing because it's, it, there are certain things people will say to people when you don't know, when nobody knows who you are, that they simply won't say if they did know who we were, you know? Uh, and that's why I think these anonymous things should be taken away. Because this poor girl right now, she's got the same kind of um, things going on as Retea Parsons did. Somebody, you know, calling her a slut and a whore and, and threatening her with things I'd rather not repeat here. But the fact is, that kind of thing, you know, just shouldn't happen. Not without the person at least being able to stand behind it with their name. At least bullies in my time had to stand in front of you and say something. And at least they could be identified. But here's another problem. Even when the bullies are being identified, sometimes the schools won't do anything. Schools, I'm sure, uh, like, I'm not calling out all schools. Some schools have great bullying programs. Others don't. When I was going to school, one of the things I often heard was, well, you got to fight your own battles. I was, at the time, I first heard that in grade one. And the bully I was trying to bring attention to was in grade six. He was like three times my size, and I'm supposed to fight my own battles? The teachers should have done something about it. Most of the time, though, they don't. They just seem to want to wash their hands of it. I don't know whether it's the same now in schools, but it shouldn't be. Because there's this code going on that all the kids used to say it, even in my time. They'd say, oh, you're a tattletale, you're a rat if you talk to the, to the, to the, to the teacher or to your parents or whatever. Well, what do you expect them to do? They can't fight you. And it's a pain in the rear end to keep listening to you all the time. And you should, then, you know, school is supposed to be a place where you're learning, not a place where you have to defend yourself constantly against idiots. So, yeah, they should go to the, the, their parents. They should go to the teachers who can actually do something about it. And they should do something about it. But again, oftentimes they don't. And it's made worse now that bullies can hide behind their computers and distribute the bullying to the whole freaking world. This stuff that goes out on YouTube, this stuff that goes out on Facebook or anywhere else, stays out there for eternity. It doesn't go anywhere. 200 years from now, the, somebody on the internet, or whatever its next evolution is, will be able to go back and watch episodes of The Peddling Prince's Podium. They'll be able to go, watch and, uh, go back and um, look at my lovely girlfriend Marie, but they'll also be able to look at the horrible pictures that were posted of Retea Parsons. They're going to be able to look at all the postings that have been made about this poor girl that I'm trying to defend now. So if the good and the bad both come along with it. The thing that bothers me is you could tell a bully this, I'm sure. 
And I'm sure they'll understand exactly what you're saying. What they're not getting, they think, oh, this is great. I can humiliate her really big time if I post this online. Yeah, but they don't stop to think that 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, after they grew up, they're going to realize what an idiot they were being and how horrible they were. And then they're going to also have to keep looking at the results of their actions for the rest of their lives, too. So it's kind of cold comfort to know that these bullies, most of them, those who actually do grow up, will eventually regret what they did. But in the meantime, this stuff gets stuck online and it never goes away. If I seem angry, it's because, like I said, I was through the bullying thing. And if this technology existed then, I'd probably still be dealing with it now. Things that were posted 30 years ago that I'd still be seeing. And that is what somebody who was my age now, th then, now, someone who's uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, that's what they are going to have to face. And that just makes me sick. I don't understand human psychology sometimes. I understand children are sometimes cruel simply because they are egocentric beings. They tend to think first of themselves, which from an instinctive standpoint makes sense. If you're going to survive before you have a lot of skills, you've got to be thinking about yourself all of the time. So back in the caveman days, that made sense. The problem is why children even get any pleasure out of being cruel to others. That I don't understand. Defending oneself, learning to look after oneself and get what one needs, I get it. Deliberately hurting someone just for the sake of hurting them, I don't, no matter what age you are. I have to wonder what history texts are going to say about the creation of these technologies, the creation of Facebook and Google and, and YouTube. Obviously, uh, they're going to have to address the technological advances that led to them, but I'm wondering what else is going to be said about their function in society. I mean, I, I can't even predict necessarily what these technologies are going to do to our society in the next 20 years. Uh, I mean, look at our technological advances over the last 30 years and compare that to the technological advances over the previous 100 before that and you'll see that technology is advancing far faster by a factor of a good thousand than it was then. And our social systems are not set up to react fast enough for something like that. Changing a law takes months and posting a tweet takes seconds. So how, you know, like, so I have to wonder we, I know our bureau, bureaucratic system and our political systems will eventually have to adapt to this new technology we created. And I think it's time we start looking at that because these adjustments have to be made and soon. Because the reason that things like Retea Parsons can happen is because we do not yet have the social capability to react fast enough to these situations. And yet at the same time we have to be careful reacting fast because we don't want to react on partial information and inadvertently accuse people that aren't actually responsible. That can happen too. So how do we find the balance? How do we find the balance between the speed of the technology and a fair trial, innocent till proven guilty? That, I guess we're going to have to leave in the hands of our leaders and hope to HE double hockey sticks that they ultimately get it right. But in the meantime, it's up to you and me. I implore all of you out there, if, you're, if you ever see somebody being bullied, dispute it right away. But after you dispute it once, don't keep disputing it, no matter what the person says after that, because if you keep giving them an audience for long enough, they'll keep going. Just say something first and then contact your authorities. If you're young, contact your parents or a teacher or a guidance counselor. If you're an adult, contact the local authorities. Even if they tell you, well, we can't do anything about that. If enough people start doing that, the authorities are going to start to figure out eventually, well, we're going to have to think of something to do about this because everybody's calling us about it. In other words, there's strength in numbers. Bullies seem powerful only because they make a brave noise. Ultimately, they're in the minority. We stand together, we can take them on.